Hi, Bob Bales here with the Traveling Fool Podcast, where we talk about places that are off the tourist path. Those places people don't know about because, well, nobody told them. And today, I'm going to take you to an island paradise where you can unplug, relax, and just forget about everyday life for a while. So stay tuned. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, it's no secret that I love the Philippines. I mean, I absolutely love this country. I've been there numerous times, and there is a lot of things to see and do. Manila is a great place to visit. There's a lot of beautiful islands and a lot of places you can go with a lot of history. But there's one place I found when I was uh, vacationing in the Philippines a few years back, and I decided I wanted to go to find a really nice beach that just didn't have a whole lot of people around it. Yeah, you can go to Boracay, where there's tons of tourists. It's a gorgeous beach. I mean, it's been rated one of the best beaches in the world for years. And you can go to places like Puerto Galera, which I've been. Great dive spot. There's beautiful tourist islands uh, in Palawan on the northern part of the island. It's just chock full of tourists. People flock there every day. But I wanted to find some place that wasn't quite as crowded as all the famous tourist locations. But I also wanted to find some place that had a really nice laid back beach resort, beach vibe type thing. So I did a little searching around, got on the internet, and Googled some alternatives to Boracay and Palawan and a few of these other famous beaches. And what I came up with was a little island off the coast of Cebu called Bantayan Island. And Bantayan Island is one of the nicest places I've ever been to. I absolutely fell in love with this place. Tell you how nice it was. I planned on going there for three days. I wound up staying a week just because I didn't want to leave. Now, Bantayan Island is not that hard to get to, but it does take a little bit of preparation. First of all, you have to get to the island of Cebu, and that's not that hard. I mean, there's flights going to Cebu from Manila daily, in fact, hourly almost. I think there's something like eight or nine flights a day headed from Manila to Cebu, so it's not that hard to get to. And Cebu's a beautiful island. The city of Cebu is a great place to visit. But if you want to get away from the city and enjoy island life, and I'm talking about the kind of island life that when you were a kid, you saw the movies and you saw this gorgeous island, beautiful palm trees, crystal clear blue waters, and not a lot of people, then you have to head to Bantayan Island. All right, let's talk about how to get to this gorgeous island. You start in the city of Cebu. What you have to do is take a taxi to the Cebu City North bus terminal. From there, you buy a ticket and take the bus to the Hagnaya Port. It costs about 165 pesos. Last time I checked, it was about 40 pesos to the dollar. And the bus ride takes about three and a half hours. At the port, there's a ferry terminal. And you have to buy a ticket at the ferry terminal and take the ferry to Santa Fe Port on Bantayan Island. Now, that's going to cost you about 180 pesos, and the trip is about an hour and a half or so, maybe not quite. It's not a bad little trip. It's a nice, slow ferry, passenger ferry, where they have seats on top, and then down below, there's all kinds of cargo, and every now and then, you might find a few motorcycles or cars on the, on the ferry, just transporting them back and forth to the island. Once you land, you're going to land at Santa Fe Port, which is right in the city of Santa Fe, which is the main tourist town on the island, and that's where all the resorts and the hotels are at. I mean, you're within walking distance to all the little hotels and resorts there. And you can take a pick from anything from really inexpensive resorts to the little higher priced ones, but I'm telling you, there's nothing really that high priced on as far as the resorts go on Buntayan. The rates were all extremely reasonable, and you had a wide range of everything from small little cottage rooms to beachfront type, um, more hotel resort type rooms. 
I stayed at two of them while I was there. I stayed at one smaller one, and then after about three or four days, I moved to a larger resort that was directly on the beach, even though the first one was just a few hundred yards off the beach and had easy access to it. So now you're on Bantayan Island. And what is there to do? Well, every once in a while, you find one of these little hidden gems, an island where there's not a lot of tourists, and you can really experience the true island life. And that's what I found there. There's not a lot of tourists. There's no shopping malls. There's no people asking you to buy condos. There's no... And then there's a small town on the very northern tip of the island. Bentayan City had the only ATM when I was there where foreign transactions are allowed, and they only took a visa card. They had a really nice market. There's a lot of history in the town. They have a fabulous old church, which is the St. Peter and Paul Church. Bantayan is the oldest parish in Visayas and Mindanao, and it was founded in 1580. And this church doesn't go far, quite that far back. The original church uh, was destroyed during one of the Moro rebellions and is being rebuilt a few times, but it's a very old church. It's gorgeous, and I love going to old churches because... There's something about the, the architecture and just the beauty of them. They're peaceful, they're serene, and they're just a lot of history there. Bantayan City is the largest town on the island, and that's where you're going to find the shopping, a lot of the restaurants. But it's still not that big of a town. I mean, you can walk around town. It's not that crowded, and it's not that far from Santa Fe. If I remember correctly, it was probably... 45 minute ride and to get there from Santa Fe you can take a taxi and by taxi I'm talking the, the taxi trikes the little motorcycle taxis that have the sidecar which is kind of cool unless you're a big guy like me and then they're they're a real pain to get in and out of but they're still fun to ride now I visited the island in the month of July and there was nobody there and when I say nobody I mean I came across like four other foreigners on Bataillon City and the only other foreigners I saw were some of the expat hotel owners that were in Santa Fe City itself on the resort side of the island. So it felt like I had the entire island all to myself. And in a way, I almost did. Now, while you won't find a lot of McDonald's or Jollibee's or Dunkin' Donuts or any other fast food joints, what you will find are some of the friendliest people I've ever encountered. The Philippines in general is very hospitable, but the people on Bantayan Island seem to be more friendly than most. I mean, uh, this is a place where you can experience true island life. Okay, how friendly are the people on Bantayan Island? Well, let me tell you. Now, when I go somewhere, I like to walk around and explore the town a little bit. And at least four times when I was walking down the street, somebody would see me, motion me over to their front yard, have me sit down and offer me a drink. And just want to talk. The people there are absolutely some of the best people I've ever met in my entire life. And I had a blast on this island. Now, what is there to do on the island? Except relax it, enjoy the beaches, and just lay around and be lazy. Well, there's a few things you can do. One, you can take a boat ride and go to a place called Virgin Beach. And it's just that. It's a little island off the coast of Bentayan. Where they've set it up is uh, a place just to bring tourists to relax for the day. I mean, it's an absolutely gorgeous beach. You can do some cliff diving there. You can relax on, in the lagoons and just enjoy getting away in, in a very beautiful, picturesque beach. There's old ruins all around the island from old forts that were built many, many years ago. There's a mangrove garden that's about 20 minutes west of Santa Fe where they film some Filipino TV shows, and it's just a beautiful mangrove garden. There's also a cave with a, like a swimming area on the northern side of the island that you can visit. And how do you find all these things? Well, you can ask some of the locals what to do there, or you can do what I did. Rent a scooter and ride around the island. Scooter rentals are all pretty cheap. I rented one from the place I was staying at. I left Santa Fe, 
not knowing anywhere about where I was going, I said, all right, the easiest way to do this is to stay as close to the water and the beach as I can. So I took every little dirt road and side road that where I could see the water and the beach, and I headed north. Some of the uh, some of the roads were paved. A lot of them were dirt. I went through all these little villages, all these little fishing towns. I had a blast. It took me a better part of a day to get around the entire island. But it was a fantastic trip. Stopped along the way, had a little roadside drinks, talked to people. And I got a lot of stares and a lot of waves and a lot of smiles because, as I said, there's not a lot of foreigners on this island. The only time that you don't want to go to Bantayan Island is probably during Holy Week, which is from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday and some of the extended holiday weekends. But during Holy Week, the island gets busy. There's as many as 20,000 Filipinos go to this island during Holy Week and go to the St. Peter and Paul Church in Bantayan City. And every hotel room is full. There's people camping out on the beaches. So that's the time not to go. And as I said, when I was there, it was during the month of July, and there was hardly anybody there. There were no tourists on the island. Bantayan is truly a place where it's laid back, relaxing, and you can really enjoy a relaxing vacation or just unplug, kick back, and enjoy a beautiful island. Like I said, Santa Fe has a few restaurants that are owned by expats and, and the locals. The food's pretty good at most of them. On Friday or Saturday night in Santa Fe, you might get a live band, which is... Pretty good bands that I heard. They usually wind down somewhere around 10.30 or 11 o'clock. It's not a wild party town at all. Now, I stayed at a hotel which is right next to where the fishing boats went out every day. Between 7 and 8 a.m. they would return in the mornings with whatever they caught. And they tell you how nice this place is, or what I thought was really cool. I walked down one morning, talked to the fishermen, looked at what they caught, and asked them, what's the guy buy one of those fish? He said, well, yeah, just talk to the lady right there that's doing the cleaning, because they would take their catch, give them to some ladies who would clean them, and then take them straight to the market. I bought a fish for, I don't know, somewhere around a dollar, and I took it back to the place I was staying at and asked the lady that ran the kitchen in the place if she would cook it as a meal for dinner. She said, absolutely. So she cooked the fish along with some rice, some fruit, and some other things. And it was one of the best meals I had while I was there. You can't get any fresher than straight off the boat from the fishermen. Everybody was extremely friendly. Everybody I ran into from fishermen getting off the boat in Santa Fe to the uh, larger fishing boats up in Bantayan City to people up in the northern little town on the tip of the island who were very seldom ever saw a tourist or a foreigner at all. So I was an oddity. But they all wanted to stop and talk to me. And it was just one of the best islands I'd ever been to in my entire life. It's definitely off the beaten path. You won't find a lot of foreigners going to this island. Very few foreigners even know about it. I think the word's trying to get out a little bit now. But it's not Boracay. It's not Palawan. You're not going to run into hordes of tourists. You're not going to run into all kinds of people edging you out of the way at the beach to get a selfie so they can throw it up on Instagram. This is a place where you can go, get off the tourist path, and really just relax. I wish I'd had more time there. I don't think one week was enough. But if you go, you need to spend at least three or four days. Explore the island. Take one day and do nothing. Just sit there on the beach, relax, and enjoy the beautiful island. And hopefully, the condos, fast food joints will pass this island by. And the few people that visit can enjoy the island life as it was meant to be. I'm 
telling you, if you ever get a chance, Bantayan Island is a place you need to visit. I hope you enjoyed it. This has been Bob Bale with The Traveling Fool. And if you like this, click the subscribe button, leave a review on iTunes, and tell me what you think. Thanks for listening.